Hello, everybody. It's Kim. I was asked in a couple of my bird groups how I made these pom-pom flowers for my babies. This one is a little bit bigger. It's for YOLO. And I have one in the budgie cage. I think you can see it over there. It's a little bit different for the budgies, but they love these things. YOLO has... This was just made last late last night before the baby went to bed. And you can see, even the budgies come over, and Nico and Loki, they come over and they help shred it up. But I'm going to show you how to make this real quick. It's super simple, super cheap, and you can make them in a lot of different sizes. All right, the supplies you're going to need for this are super simple. You may have a lot of this around your house already. And it starts for me, I have some mini cupcake papers. I use these a lot just to get different size pom-poms or flowers. Um, I picked these up on clearance after Christmas for like 40 cents a pack and there's 150 I think in this pack with these uh, peppermint looking stripes. You can find lots of cupcake liners in different colors. You could use the big packs of the pastel ones. So there's like 150 in the pack. These I picked up extras when I was in town because I make a lot of these for the um, for YOLO, my green cheek, Kanye, and they have 75 in here. So this is going to make a lot of pom-poms. I've been making a lot and I still have a bunch of these left. So, or if you have a, a large parrot, you could use coffee filters. I'm not a coffee drinker. I don't have coffee filters to show you. But if you don't want the plain white ones or the plain brown ones, you can color them with the food dye that we use to say if you want to make a pink cupcake um, frosting or something like that. You can use those. You could just drip them on. You could spray them on. You can brush them on. However you want. If you don't want plain white, you can make those just as cute. So the cupcake liners, then you need some type of string. And you want... You, you try to avoid cotton if you can. If, you, if that's all you have and you want to make one of these right away, you can use cotton, but birds can get it in their crop and they can become impacted. So, you know, just keep an eye out. When it gets to the end, get rid of that little cotton string. But what I use here is a natural jute cording. I found this at the Dollar Tree. You want to make sure that it's natural, that there's nothing on it. The ones in the gardening center that are green, we have no clue what that's dyed with. We don't know if it's food safe. It's just made to string tomatoes or cucumbers up in the garden. So, you know, look for something natural. You could also use natural hemp cording. You have to make sure it's not covered with anything. When I was at a store looking for hemp twine, all I could find one, it had, it said it, it was coated with something. And I'm sorry, I don't remember what it is. But it did not have the natural where, you know, it's just the cordage itself. So you need some type of a, obviously, string or cord. And then I use the pony beads. You could find these at the dollar store as well. So if you, and you don't even need these. Honestly, you could tie a knot before you start stringing these up. And you would have no need to get that. You could... If all you had at home was the string and the cupcake liners, you can make these right away. But I start with the pony bead in the middle. And, you know, these, they have a big hole in them. I just tie a knot in them. It makes it look like the center of a flower. If you're making a pom-pom, just make the knots. You don't need them. So you could use pony beads. Or if you have a large button laying around, you can use a button. See, it's got a little bit bigger hole on the back. As long as your string will go through it, I could use a button. You could take, you know, a little bit bigger one, something that you're not worried your bird's going to choke on. Um, you know, if it has a, a decent size hole, you could drill a hole in it bigger. You could use a bottle cap, whatever. Um, like I said, you don't even have to have them. It's just to add some little decoration to it. The other thing you're going to need is a simple pair of scissors. Most of us have these laying around the house. I tend to lose a lot of them. So I buy a lot from the dollar store just because, you know, they get misplaced here. And then you're going to need some way to string up the cupcake liners. Now, 
if you don't have one of what I'm going to show you next, you can take your cordage, you could take a piece of tape at the end and cut, you know, just put it on flat, cut it to make a little point so it's a little bit stiff, and then you can use this to thread through everything, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, or you could take some glue, you can put it on the end, let it dry, make it nice and stiff, and you could thread it through that way. But if you happen to have one, I have, this is a dowel needle, it's silly to be this long, but what it has is, I'm trying to get it close enough where it's, oh, it's, it's not going to focus here. It has a big eye in it, like that, so that you can put, see that big eye? You could put your thread through it or your cordage through it to um, string up the cupcake liners. These can be cut, if you could find them, and I think you might find some in the dollar store, in the crafting section, you can find embroidery needles. Um, they come in metal or plastic. They do not have a sharp point on them, so they work really good for kids to string up things. It's just like, I use this one, one, because I had a bunch of them, the style making needles. And two, I do like the point, because I'll go through, um, if I'm making toys, I can go through cardboard and a few other things. But you could punch a hole, and I'll show you that next. So if you don't have a needle, you could take something like a bamboo skewer or anything with a point. You could poke it into your cupcake liner, make your hole, and then you could string them up that way. So when I'm sitting here at night and I'm getting these ready, I could cut these, put my hole, have my cordage ready, and just start stringing them up. So you don't have to have that. Or, on these little ones, it might work okay. You could take a single hole punch and just punch a bunch of holes through these, and then the cordage will fit through it no problem. So those are the basic supplies you need. Um, so let's get on to making our flowers. Okay, I need to give you a little different view here because my camera ran out of battery. So you know what the items are that we need. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the cupcake papers, I fold it in half, and then I fold it into quarters. What that does is you see this where the bottom of the, right here, where the bottom of the cupcake liner is, that's where I stop cutting. You can cut on these little ones, you can cut back a little bit more if you want to, but I just kind of follow some ridges down. You can make the little cuts as wide or as narrow as you want. I don't really think about it too much because I'm sitting watching TV when I do this, okay? I make a whole bunch of these. I have my needle on my thread with my pony bead to stop everything from falling off, and it makes it cute if you're turning it into a flower. And you want to come, you don't want to go to the tip. You want to come about part way down here simply because these rip. I mean, they are paper after all, and I'm pulling kind of a thick thread through it. So I just hold it like this, it's supporting the paper, and you pull it on all the way to the end. Okay? So I'm gonna cut a bunch of these so I can show you. I'll do another one, just so you could see it again in case anything was out of view. And then I'll do a bunch and we'll thread them together. So in half, And see, you start to get that where the cup, bottom of the cupcake is. I fold it in half again. I know where my line is here, so I don't go past that. And I just snip. Again, depending on your bird. The nice thing is, you can use mini cupcakes. You can use regular cupcakes. You can do this out of coffee filters if you have a large bird. It's just fun for all of them to have something they can rip apart. I put some seeds or nuts into them. You know, I separate the little petals and it becomes a foraging toy. And it's just a lot of fun. So there's the second one. You can see where we're going here, okay? I made my knot a little big on that, but it's gonna be hidden most of the way. So I'm gonna cut up a bunch of these so I can show you stringing them together.
Okay, so just so you know how big this is going to get, I cut 14 more to add to these, so it's a total of 16. And a lot of times, like the first row I put so that the little cups are all facing up, sort of like this. It doesn't matter how you do it. You can alternate them. You could turn them all down. Um, if you're doing a pom-pom, which is a full circle almost, you could do half up, half down. That's sort of what I do if I'm doing more of a pom-pom like the budgie boys had over there. That blue one. Um, that one I didn't even have time to cut the cupcakes. I just kind of made sure they were individual and flipped them back and forth and made them into like a pom-pom for them because I was new and I hadn't seen a million and one videos on how to do these. And I wish I knew which one I saw the pom-pom on. I think it was, oh boy, I think it was a coffee filter one. And I'm like, those are way too big for my buys. And then on one of my groups, they said, well, you can use cupcake papers. So that's what I did. Now, anyway, you can see it goes together once. I mean, it took me two or three minutes. What I like to do on the bottom is as I string them, I alternate them around in a circle because one time I just stacked them and it's hard to get them to kind of move around once you get them all together to make it a nice, you know, flower shape. So I would recommend just, you know, you get the hang of it. You just start moving them around as you go and where you want them to end up and you can adjust it a little bit, but it's kind of a pain. Oh, my budgies are playing with theirs right now in their cage, that blue one that was in there. They like said it's for some reason, I don't know if it's the easy paper or what. They just love ripping these things up. And even Yolo over there, well, he's eating again. It's, it is a baby, so it eats probably more than the average. Um, I just give him a cupcake liner once in a while, and he or she, because I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, will play with it and play with it and play with it and then I guess when it's done it throws it off the top of its cage and decides that it needs a fresh one because it's chewed it up too much so they also use the um the kebabs I take those apart and I string different things on them and I add cupcake liners to them they'll eat the kebab they'll shred the cupcake liners I'll put like a popsicle sticks that I drilled a small hole in and it just gives them different enrichment opportunities as you can see I mean these are silly fast it only took me minutes to cut them probably could do two or three at a time I just like I said watching tv or something or just you know if I don't want any noise and the babies are asleep I might sit here and cut papers one night and then the next day string them together and you can get them I get most of mine at the dollar store to be honest because they're just plain paper and they are food safe because humans can eat them so they're safe for our birds they don't have any dyes that will hurt anybody but again they come in different sizes you can even get jumbo ones to make jumbo cupcakes all right so once I get it together like that. I like to pull it tight so you see it's starting to look like a flower. Then what I do to secure it is I simply make a knot on the back side. So I'll pull it rather tight. And to do that, I put it down. Put my needle through my string a couple of times. If I was making a pom-pom, I would make double this. And you'll have a knot on each end of your pom-pom. But I like the flowers better. They prefer them either on top of the cage or hung on the side of the cage. So I don't need a big, super long string. And then I take, I find it easier to put my needle in here, push it down real tight. And I can pull my string pretty tight. And then I call it the beat-up game. Fluff it up real nice. See, this is almost making a pom-pom with just 16 of them. The smaller, the less you need. 
and there you go now you have a cute little flower you could put seeds or pine nuts or little pieces of nuts or whatever else enrichment so they would forage through it i like to use dried vegetables i do freeze dried i get a pack you know i mean they last forever freeze dried vegetables or freeze dried fruit and you can stick some in there yolo loves freeze dried mango which is one of my favorites so I don't give a lot, you know, they only get one, one little piece a day, but you know, I'll stick a piece of mango in there and maybe a, a freeze-dried green bean and maybe a freeze-dried carrot or something like that. And then a few seeds, um, especially for my budgies, they only get their seeds in foraging toys. They don't eat seeds. Otherwise, they get um, some pellets and they get their, um, their chop. Otherwise, they forage for it, which is natural. And I hang these low to the ground in the budgie cage because they like to forage on the bottom of the cage. So I can even um, put a bunch of these down on the ground and have them go from flower to flower. They, they're really, it's really kind of cute. Watch them go from flower to flower looking for their seeds and good stuff like that. So anyway, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And you guys have a wonderful day.